march to Minneapolis continues here in Jacksonville. It is second round play from the East region. The number six seed Maryland taking on the three seed LSU. Winner today advances to Washington DC to take on the survivor of Minnesota and Michigan State which is coming up from Des Moines. And welcome courtside everybody. I and Eagle Jim Spinarkle. Jamie Erdahl joins us as well. Neither of these teams were in the NCAA tournament right. a year ago and now they have a chance to move on to the Sweet 16, Jimmy. You size up this matchup, you get the old school battle of the big men between LSU and Maryland. Size might be the key word, Ian, and that we're gonna get to see four very talented front court players. We're gonna start with Fernando, who's very good at the post. His job is to get it in there and make something happen with it on the offensive end. The other side of the floor, Bigby Williams, his job is to make sure you don't score on him to get it out of there. We look at a couple of more modern day styles here. Little step away shot for Smith. Keep in mind he had eight offensive rebounds to go with his shooting the other night. And for the LSU side, Reed can shoot the ball from long range. He had three offensive rebounds. Keep in mind again, they all four of these guys had double doubles. All right, let's check out the starting lineups. Anthony Cowan Jr., Eric Ayala, Daryl Morcel, Bruno Fernando, and Jalen Smith for Maryland, LSU, Tremont Waters, Skylar Mays, Marlon Taylor, Nas Reed, and Cavell, Big B Williams. Head coach is Tony Benford, the interim coach, no Will Wade for LSU under the microscope for allegedly arranging payments for recruits. Reports of an FBI wiretap, he is suspended indefinitely. And the head coach, for Maryland, Mark Turgeon in his eighth year as the head man for the Terps. Officiating crew, excellent. John Gaffney, Brian Dorsey, and Earl Walton. The first game of the second round of the 2019 NCAA tournament. It's in the East region. Fernando and Big B Williams, Maryland controls the trip. We are underway in Jacksonville. And I, we just spoke for a moment about the front court. It'll be interesting to see if any of those guys can avoid foul trouble early on in this game. Cowan had a rough shooting game in the first round victory over Belmont. Jump shot doesn't go for Smith. And it's rebounded by Skylar Mays, who had a strong all-around performance in LSU's win against Yale. The spin inside, Waters ends up on his backside. Out of control to start. Not a good shot, I don't think, for Maryland. Get loose a little bit, get that ball moving around the horn, baby, before Smith takes that first shot early. Ayala, deep one. Rebound, Smith got his hand on it, knocks it out of bounds. Maryland, 79-77 win over Belmont, a nail-biter. The Terps shot just 43% and 6 of 22 from three-point territory. But, Jimmy, they only turned it over five times in that game. That's so important, especially as you try to advance. Reed powers to the rim. He lost it. Out of bounds. It was tipped by Maryland. LSU, 79-74 went over Yale. It was a late charge by the Bulldogs to make it interesting. First NCAA tournament win for the Tigers since 2009. Both of these teams put up double figures. Oh, quick hitter, Reed gets the inbounds from Waters and scores. Yeah, a little fall asleep type of play just then, but a quick catch by Reed, and you notice he didn't really gather and shoot it. He got it off very quickly. It was catch and then deliver. Last Sweet 16 appearance for LSU, 2006. They went to the Final Four that year. Fernando on a spin, side rim. And a rebound snatched by Mays. And yeah, that's well defended by Reed. If you can get him drifting away to the baseline side for that shot rather than a post-up drive to the middle, that's a win. Reed, that's a three. Rebounded by Jalen Smith. Up the floor in a hurry. It's usually a slower, more methodical pace for Maryland. Smith. Wow! Rejected! <laughs> Foul called. Big B. Williams came flying in as the second man threw. Yeah, part of what you want to do as a, a defender here is you want to stay away from a driver if you have a shot blocker behind you, but that's a good call. It's all against the right arm, even though he was shifting to the left. Good call from the officials, but let your shot blocker do his job behind you. The foul was called on the front man, Marlon right. Taylor. Yep. Jalen Smith, 66% shooter, and Maryland's still looking to get on the board. Just a slight thing there for that shot with Smith, but he did slide just a little bit away from the free throw line. Terps went 13 of 20 at the free throw line against Belmont. Smith, the freshman from Baltimore, one out of two. Yeah, see how he didn't move at all? He 
basically took the fundamentals and really didn't go outside them at all. That was a good-looking stroke for a guy whose numbers aren't that great from the free throw line. Mays had 19 points in the win over Yale. Jump shot is off. Watch out. Ayala, very poised for a freshman. He'll handle it. Cowan, the penetration, drive. Smith, a three. And it's rebounded by Big B Williams. Both teams excellent rebounding squads. Water shake and bake all the way for the flip to the rim. It's one of the things the scouting report says about LSU. You better make sure Waters doesn't get to the middle of the lane. Obviously going by his guy, but Smith was not there to step across and help out. LSU led the SEC in points in the paint this season. 39 points per game. Ninth in the country. Cowan got it. Good sign for Maryland as Cowan hits on his first attempt. Yeah, coming off a 3-for-18 game last time out, so clearly for Maryland and for him individually, a huge bucket to get him started. And he was one of 10 yep. from downtown. We're tied at four. Show a double on Waters, he leads it. Oh boy. Rejected Smith, gums Big B Williams. Watch every game live on your phone, tablet, computer, and favorite streaming device with March Madness Live. Watch now at ncaa.com slash March Madness or download the app today. Big B. Williams will take a seat and Darius Days will check in. So they'll play a little bit smaller, shifting Nas Reed to the middle. When I say smaller, uh, yeah, I was just looking it's a relative the, yeah, term. Yeah. But 225 is what Days is carrying there weight-wise. Here he goes. Kick it out. Days, book it. It's a three. Not an easy thing to do to come off the bench, be cold, and be ready to shoot. Because this building is a little cold right now when you're sitting on the sideline, but he's a 37% three-point shooter. Multi-dimensional six-foot-six-inch swing man. And a 7-4 lead for LSU. If he dribbles it, he's going to get double teamed down there. Fernando, knocked away by Mays, goes the other side. Morcel coming off an excellent offensive showing. Nice look. Dump down, shot clock winding down, big shot goes. Smith was off balance and still gathered yeah, to get the deuce. He took that half a second, I, and to your point, to gather himself and make sure he could get a little bit of his body strength and leg strength. Morcel with a good delivery there. Waters there he likes the switch, drives, tipped home. LSU crashing the offensive glass, and it's Days who gets credit for it. 9-6, Tigers. Allen will like to shoot as the point guard. He's 16 points per game, turns it over right there. He had it intercepted. A step in there by Taylor. LSU up by three. They get the play call from yeah. Tony Benford. And yeah, they'll come for a screen for Waters. Watch the slip cuts. And the pick pretty well defended there. Simple because Waters didn't really do anything with the ball that trip. Waters looking for a runway. Kick out for three. Taylor too strong. Long rebound for Nando for Maryland. That one's pretty good though to start with LSU not allowing Maryland to get into transition. The drive. Uh, Ayala missed it. Got his hand on it. Offensive board. Ayala in a crowd. Boy, he had an easy one just then that he missed. Good kick out. Ayala, short. Fernando guides it to Morcell. Extended possession here for Maryland. Cowan gives up his dribble. Oh, you had Fernando. Smith flails towards the rim and he draws the foul. And Nas Reed can't believe it. Yeah, Reed we'll, picks it up. Yeah, and we'll start with him. Just a simple post up play and he kicks it out to a shooter. And then Smith taking it against the defensive just playing real smooth and once again lsu you better keep them off the glass opening weekend of the ncaa tournament we are in jacksonville and we bring in the third member of our crew jimmy erdahl jimmy there are two narratives that maryland basketball wanted to shake as they entered the round of 32 iron in this ncaa tournament the first was as the fourth youngest team in ncaa basketball that they could use their youth as an excuse for some of their hiccups back on december 21st maryland lost to seton hall they had to sit on that all holiday break mark turgeon actually said to his wife this could really go one of two ways for us they came together the right way secondly maryland could suffer from early tournament loss itis that win on third Thursday really allowed this team to take the pressure off their shoulders. They practiced light and loose yesterday. The final message to them was take this opportunity to continue to grow together as a team. 
Is that an actual condition that we know of? It is if you are Maryland, but they uh, they have <laughs> cured themselves of it with that first win. Early tournament loss itis. Itis, yes. yes. I'm getting my MD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doctor. Yep. Maryland actually trailed Belmont by six at halftime. They were down by as many as 12, so they were tested in that first round. Rally to win, travel called off the rebound action from Fernando. Pretty good step in there by Fernando to get his hands on it. Just a little bit of a shuffle after he caught it. Aaron Wiggins in, he replaces Eric Ayala. So that's a freshman replacing a freshman, which plays off of Jamie's report. They are young. Fourth youngest team in Division I, but they played a lot, these freshmen, and have gotten a lot of experience. Javante Smart, freshman for LSU now in. Yeah, another very inexperienced young team also, LSU. Good luck to the middle of the floor, no catch. Smith recovers defensively. Big B Williams with the right hand, no. Fernando, the board. Yeah, just a touch out of control on that catch and go underneath the basket just then by Big B Williams. And there's a travel on Fernando. Back to back. Third turnover for Maryland. Introducing delicious orange vanilla Coke. Drink it with basketball. Nas Reed is on the sideline for LSU. Emmett Williams checks in. A freshman for the Tigers from Fort Myers. He replaces the junior Skyler Mays. And this LS LSU team has a high-powered offensive attack, and you, you know going to a little bit of a zone right now that they want to slow them down. Waters missed it from the outside. Rebound ripped down by Fernando. Get it ahead. Morcel takes it in. Two defenders, and the ball is out of bounds off of LSU. Maryland actually had 20 fast-break points in the victory over Belmont. That's uncharacteristic for the Turfs. Yeah, because they score 71 a game, but going one-on-two against this front line really isn't going to get it done, especially you see number 11 there. Bigby Williams really holds his ground nicely defensively. Neither team shooting it well. Maryland's 2 of 8, LSU 4 of 12. Cowan forced to kick it out. Shot clock at 14. Cowan lines it up. Short. Look at the work on the glass. That's oh, going to be a they're travel. Going but... against one another. And LSU, same team, did not come away with it because Days was in a battle with Waters. It's a travel. I, and not only was it going one against another, and there was another in there, too. Look at the three of them are fighting for it. If you're a coach, that's a great effort. And it was Big B Williams and his big body that got in there. LSU couldn't squeeze. <laughs> The orange to quote Clark Kellogg, and it's out of bounds again. Now that it's happened the second time, maybe you say, hey, somebody grab the ball, let's go with it. It might be the pumpkin. Either way, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's some form of food. Clark, a nice pop, that's okay. He deserves it. 9 7 lead for LSU. Cal on a bounce, Fernando. Quick double. Marcel off the mark. So LSU is playing the percentages when Fernando catches the ball on the blocks. If he dribbles it once, they'll double team him. They want this game outside. Watch out. defender. Oh. Foul is called. Fortunate Emmett Williams with a pump fake that he didn't get clobbered. The foul on Jalen Smith. Watch at the end of this play. You'll see Smith after that ball fake. 25 in the middle. He reads it, he doesn't read the ball fake, and he starts to time his jump, and that's when I said, uh oh watch out, because I thought he was going, for looking at that, I thought he was going further left over the shoulders of the shooter. The muscular freshman, Emmett Williams, 6'6", 225, 69% free throw shooter. Watch your sports news without the yelling and fake debates while well, stream CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 network for nonstop tournament highlights and fix. Download the CBS Sports app today. Sorrell Smith Jr. is in. So is Ricky Lindo Jr. And it's 10-7 LSU. Maryland has missed its last six shots. Yet they only trail by three. And one of the things that they have trouble with and they have had trouble with this season is getting assists on buckets. And LSU is taking them out of their sets a little bit right now. Only 13 assists per game for Maryland. You would think that would be a little higher than that. He's 10th in the Big Ten. Cow on the J. Long rebound. Didn't go from Wiggins, and it's knocked around to LSU. Waters. He got cut off. 
Ball got deflected and scooped up by Williams. One on one with Wiggins. Williams rises up, gets the roll and the foul. So a touch of a broken play just then with Waters, that exchange out front. You don't know what's happening, but then the delay, he's just going to step. You see how close he gets the, to the middle of the floor where he knows that's his comfort level to go right over it, but you let him bounce and go right through you. Not going to be much of a defensive effort there by Wiggins because you're just going to get shot right over. So the foul assessed to Wiggins. Brian Dorsey has made his way over to the scores table and having a chat with alternate official Bill Eck. LSU's got a 12-7 lead. The two coaches want to huddle up here if possible. A free throw coming for Emmett Williams. Didn't really see a whole lot of that except the possibility of a clock issue because the play was, I know there was a foul on it, but it was a clean play going through the middle of the lane just then. Clock shows 12:47. That's where we stand. Williams going to the free throw line. So here's the jump shot. There's the foul. The shot should stop. I don't know. There's five seconds the difference, difference from right what there. we just saw and what is currently on the clock. Seemed to me like the the call was made at the 52 rather than the 47. Three-point play for Emmett Williams. It's 13-7 LSU. Eight points in the paint for the Tigers. And a long drought for Maryland. Smith nearly turns it over. Upstairs. Oh, you had him. Inside! Fernando rocks the rim. Yeah, this day and age, you see it go upstairs for the lob, but a beautiful, fundamentally sound bounce pass the old-fashioned way. They had missed their last eight shots before that ferocious finish. The press had a little bit to do with it. Stop and go by Mays. And a foul called on Maryland. All right, how many times have we seen this go upstairs for the lob, and he goes underneath? Beautifully done, breaking that press. And I know that LSU does not want to give that guy those types of shots. Foul called on Sorrell Smith, Jr. Four-point lead for LSU. Mays watched by Wiggins. Trying to set it up in the post for Williams. Kick. Taylor wasn't looking to shoot it. Seven on the timer. Smart the ball fake. He put it off the window. Javante Smart with an athletic move going to the rim. 11-0 LSU off the bench using their depth and it's working and that also allows them to pressure the perimeter as much as possible with the fresh legs out there Linda lets it fly long rebound grab by Taylor for LSU Mays a euro blocked Lindo got back defensively and now Maryland is running Ayala right towards the rim a wraparound lay-in for Eric Ayala Let's see what happens when a shot gets blocked and guys aren't ready to retreat because they weren't expecting that shot to get blocked. I wasn't either, and it was a terrific play to cut it off. LSU leads by four. We approach 11 minutes to go in this first half. Smart over Lindo. Yes, it's a three. Yeah, if he can give him the numbers, the way he shoots the basketball, he gets to the line a lot where he's very, very good, but he's active offensively. He needs some punch off the bench, and he's one guy that does it for LSU, and defensively, he's pretty quick also. Three-time Mr. Basketball in the state of Louisiana, local product, Baton Rouge, native. Ball got deflected, spin by Wiggins, kicks it out, Fernando. Nice ball fake. Whoa. He got denied by the rim. Yeah, the ball fake was a good one, but then he had no place to go when he took that extra stride underneath the basket. Threw it right up underneath it. The reserves leading the charge for LSU. Smart, short, and out of bounds. LSU up by seven on Maryland. Play this game in the paint. We thought the bigs would be involved, but everybody else has to bring it to the paint. That's where it's going to be won this afternoon. Maryland comes back and answers with a quick one. This season, NCAA coaches and Infinity are taking a timeout to fight cancer with Infinity's $1 million donation to the American Cancer Society. This is an Infinity timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. Mark Turgeon, 
been around this NCAA tournament for a long time. Go back to his playing days at Kansas. He was a four-year participant in the tournament. There he is on the left, young Turgeon. Got to the Final Four in 86 as a head coach. He's taken three different teams, Wichita State, Texas A&M, and Maryland to the big dance. Team Turgeon is in attendance. His wife and kids, Ann Turgeon, hanging on the edge of their seat. I was going to say, you can tell that they are the losing side of the 18-11 score right now. Maryland is one of nine on three-point tries. Just cannot get into their sets offensively. Very good perimeter defensive team. Even when the bigs come out for LSU, you see everybody matches up pretty well. Lindo keeps the ball moving. Ayala peaks to the clock. Three to shoot. Ayala trying to make it happen. Turns the corner into a crowd. They're going to run out of time. Yep. Shot clock violation for Maryland. Out of a timeout. That's four turnovers for the Terps. So I, I mentioned the defense on the perimeter. You see the guys here, but now watch the collapse. How many guys? There are four guys we've seen so many times so far on the defensive glass. At least three LSU players getting in there to clog things up for the bigs for Maryland. Maryland averages 71 points per game, 213th in the country. LSU a high scoring team, 81.3 per game. Somebody's got to help him. A little bit of trouble. Yep. And a steal for Wiggins. Morcell spins and scores. Now one of the few times you can get away with that turn in the lane just then. Generally that gets eaten up when you have a shot blocker behind you. you watch at the tail end of this play. A little bit of a spin right there. And he gets away with it. He is a good slasher. Yep. Very aggressive at 6'5", 200. Sophomore from Baltimore, Daryl Morsell. He tied his career high with 18 points in the win over Belmont. My guess is if Bigby Williams was around that play just then, yeah. that would have been gobbled up, but it was Reed. Bigby Good Williams. Oh. Whoa! The slammer, Nas Reed. So quick to the rim. I mean, just the catch alone with the body action and the work he does before the catch. But then you think he's going to gather and take a little bit of time to get to the rim, but it's instantaneously. Cowan gets it back, sets it up. Lindo hangs. He's going to the free throw line. Thought he was going to have a chance at a three-point play. The athletic freshman will shoot a pair. Here's some of the power play. You see him pushing off on that side. Clean play to hold his man defensively off. Watch, he's just going to ride him, get to the middle of the lane, and a perfectly timed pass and delivery. So his work is done before the catch. And he has a 50-pound advantage <laughs> on Ricky Lindo Jr. Why did you look at me when you said that? <laughs> You're my partner. I, I try to make eye contact. <laughs> Tournament summary, three 12 seeds have won a first round game. Fifth time, first time that's happened since 2014. Six teams win their first tournament game in school history. We saw Belmont Mont, and Wofford do it right here in Jacksonville. And Lindo at the line, Mark Turgeon said, I need some good minutes from him in this game today. Get a little more out of my bench. He exits there, playing pretty good in terms of just rugged basketball. But he'll be back, obviously. Fernando in, Lindo, Washington DC native, sits. 20 to 15 LSU. But early on in this game, first 11 minutes, I would say that neither one of these teams have established their own style of play. LSU likes to go up and down and score at a high level. Maryland the half court sets. Neither one getting where they want. Out of misdirection, but Waters missed oh. it on the inside. A collision. Fernando and Taylor. Uh, should be Taylor trying to come in for that left side rebound. You know, when you come in there and Fernando's around that basket, the wild shot coming in loses it at the last second. Yep. And Taylor is called for the bump. That's his second foul. So Darius Days will replace Taylor. Well, Taylor thinks he can get anything off the glass. Just a 42 and a half inch vertical leap. Yeah, I, I would put that on my resume. That's not bad. I'd lead with it. It's just 41 inches higher than mine. Yep. Ayala. Missed it from long range. Rebound to Smart. The Big Ten is 7-1 here in the tournament. The only loss, Wisconsin. Yeah, one of the things about Maryland in their half court sets their balance. It sets up their balance on defense pretty well. Smart off the dribble. Didn't want to challenge Smith. Low pass. Reed scoops it up with 10 to shoot. 
High screen for Waters. Watch the middle of the lane. Splits defenders. Kick. Smart. Fakes. Baseline wow. flip. Doesn't go. And the rebound to Smith. He rips it down, and Maryland is running. Morsell taken away by Waters. Waters up the floor in a hurry. And ninth in the country at steals, LSU. Reed dives towards the rim. Missed it on the bank. Rebound. Knocked around. Ball fake. Days draws the foul. Yeah, part of the M.O. for both of these teams is just get it up to the rim and let things happen and go after the offensive rebounds. Fernando, his first foul. Five-point game with LSU in front. First half. Led by All-American Danny Manning, Kansas made an improbable run to the 1988 national title despite having lost 11 games that season, earning them the nickname Danny and the Miracles. Lowe's, where hoop fans do it right. Our game summary with Maryland trailing LSU 20 to 15. Terps are one of 10 from three-point territory, and the LSU bench has been outstanding, outscoring Maryland's 14 to 2. The inside presence of Nas Reed for the Tigers. Yeah, they're getting some paint points. 40 of their 79 points against Yale the other day came in the paint, and if the guy can catch and deliver this quickly, yeah, if I'm a coach, I'm going to find him as often as I possibly can. More from Jimmy Erdahl. Well, Nas Reed is playing on a different body than he had when he arrived at LSU almost a full calendar year ago. He was 274 when he hit campus. He lost 30 pounds. The staff said he really just didn't know how to eat well, work out well. Admittedly, he couldn't even do a push-up because his upper body was not where it needed to be. He lost a 30. He now plays at around 250 because of the muscle he gained back. But the thing he misses most in that 30-pound weight loss, guys, I checked, chicken Alfredo. Oh. I know, I know. No, no devastating loss. Uh, apparently, you've hit Jimmy in a very <laughs> sore place. <laughs> but now he can do plenty of push-ups. Let's clarify that. Plenty well, of push-ups. I've heard that that's the halftime act, Jamie. Ian and myself going out there for a push-up contest. <laughs> and might, a chicken it, Alfredo it, eating contest? It might clear out the building. Nas Reed was a McDonald's All-American, and he may have taken that to heart a little too much. 22-15 <laughs> LSU. 7.37 to go in the first half here in Jacksonville. You see the difficulty of getting into their sets because of the perimeter. Oh, look at the double team. Just missed on the timing there by Waters. And a foul called. A little Ole defense as Mays got him as he passed by. First round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues today on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Waters with a steal. He has now set a single season record for LSU. This little conversation got Gaffney with the two bigs underneath the basket. I don't believe they're going to try to post up Fernando at some point. Smith missed it. Fernando keeps it alive. Controlled by Smart. Smart takes it all the way and gives it up. Reed. Fakes up Fernando. Oh, Reed doesn't get the jam, but he is going to the free throw line. Nas Reed went in there with some anger. Yeah, with 280 pounds, I don't think you get to this spot on the floor, but with 250, quick enough to make that drive towards the basket. And just a Smith grab on the arm to stop him from getting to the rim for a very, very emphatic dunk. It is the second foul on the young man they call Sticks. Yep, Jalen Smith. Got to move him to the bench at this point. Nas Reed, 73% shooter. And here comes the change with Ricky Lindo Jr. Replacing Jalen Smith. Largest lead for LSU. And Reed can extend it here. Six points for Nas Reed. LSU will make a change. Emmett Williams in. Javante Smart sits. Smart rolls up those shorts, by the way. He goes yeah, old school. I noticed that the other day. I, I kind of like it. Oh, I mean, you would. That was your look. That was a lot shorter than that, even. <laughs> Callan looks to the inside. Maryland, there's the post. Watch for a dribble line. If they go dribble, they'll double them. Desperate need of a bucket here. Morsell penetrates. Ooh. Doesn't get the roll. Morcell getting to the cup, but LSU turns it over. 
What a beautiful drive by Marcel with the spin on it, too. Watch how he has to squeeze his way through bodies and finishes it off and then just catches a little too much of the rim. Tough break for Maryland, but they get it back. Maryland is 5 of 22 from the field. That's 23%. 1 of 10 from 3. Scoring drought has now extended in excess of two minutes for the Terrapins. He's open underneath the basket. Callum penetrates. Wow, off the rim. We've seen three or four shots like that get on the rim and just roll off. Waters all the way. Somehow finds an opening for two. And a whistle. Timeout. And just a tie up at the end of that call just then. It's a timeout, but they were just tangled. Two guys got thrown off balance just then. And he's going to get to the paint somehow quickly on the inside with the flip. Coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament is sponsored by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Not sorry, Reese's. Uber Eats. Your school is Sweet 16 bound? Let's eat. And by GMC. We are professional grade. After answering the prayers of strangers, will the mystery behind it all be uncovered? Don't miss a new episode of God Friended Me. That's tomorrow after 60 minutes, only CBS. Back here in Jacksonville. Well, it's the big dance as we know it. This would be a really big dance right here. Yeah, he's got him. Yeah, he Actually holding on to him to protect him from falling down, and the officials recognize ah, that. right there at the end, the Casa Doble. <laughs> 16 points off the bench for LSU. Maryland as a team has 15. Uh, and I think, you know, what they have to start to do is catch the ball, and they're just going around the horn, right? Nothing really happening. Little post action. He loses it down deep. Cough up by Fernando. Smart crosses over, scoops it in. One of the things that LSU is very, very good, and they pride themselves on, is turning you over and getting steals, ninth in the nation. And it's just working to a T right now. The flip doesn't go for Cowan. Ball knocked around, claimed by Morcell. And on the other end, Maryland does not force a lot of turnovers. No, not at all. One of the worst in the country in that number. Second to last. Morcell. Jumper. No. Ice cold. 28-15, LSU. Yeah, I just don't think Maryland's playing with an intensity going towards the basket. LSU is. Yeah. Emmett Williams on the interior. There's the big time difference right there. The way they're attacking LSU, they're really charging at the basket. Whereas Maryland, we've seen a bunch of shots where they're just off balance when they get into the middle of the paint and or closer. It's a 10-0 run for the Tigers. They need it. Wiggins, he's got it. Oh, you talk about exactly right, needing a shot to go. He's a very good shooter from long range, and Cowan just filled it up there for him and laid and set the table at 41% from three. They were one of ten before that three-pointer. On the pass, Waters was looking to set it up. He actually had an opening near the rim, and a foul called against Cowan. You see, here's a little action right now, and we get into it in terms of just get. Got to get a better effort there in terms of trying to diff either one of two things. Stay with the guy who's cutting or two, find the dribbler. And if you're going to switch, make sure you switch and get him going east to west rather than just letting him stand there and pass. And an impressive dish from Tremont Waters. Reed missed it from three-point territory. Wiggins the rebound. I know he can make that, but I'm not sure about that shot under these conditions. Crossover, Callen, kick, extra feed. Morcel wow. got his man in the air, but there was help there from Smart. Jumper, Ayala, no. Callen's got the offensive board. Good kick out. Find the open man. Morcel, a three. Second chance opportunities. Maryland doing their work on the offensive glass. At least they get a rhythm shot out of it. And I know that's the easiest one to get sometimes when it has a broken play on the second chance opportunity. Cut it to single digits. 
Reed hop step to the rim, knocked away. Ayala, LSU controls it. Mays sticks it from deep. Skyler Mays, Baton Rouge native. And an important shot for LSU just then. Even though it's the first half, they sensed that Maryland was getting something going offensively. A good answer to slow Maryland down. Let's see if they can keep the rhythm at the offensive end. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Again, that open look there. Ayala will take it to the rim for two. Reed stepping away on that play also defensively. 33-23 LSU. Yeah, so the last three sets, Maryland a little bit better. Reed. There you go. And chair was pulled out. Cowan, right down the middle, he loses it. It bounces off of Waters out of bounds. That was smart from behind. Nice play to stay with that play. Nothing has come easy to Anthony Cowan Jr. And here's the look. Nice look with the left hand. He's good with that one. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg, Clark, Kenny, Wally will have first half analysis preview of the Wofford-Kentucky matchup. Kenny will tell us what makes his perfect player. That's coming up on AT&T at the half. Anthony Cowan Jr. comes in averaging just under 16 points per game for Maryland. He's been such an important cog for the Terps over his three years with the program, but the struggles here in the NCAA tournament, three of 18 against Belmont, he is one of five today against LSU. And I think the Maryland bench is just gonna have to sit there with him during that timeout and keep encouraging him to just do what he's comfortable with. Now, once again, LSU has a lot to do with this right now in terms of taking him out of his sets. Here comes that lob, a little bit of a hold to get to that spot. And a foul called as Fernando is trying to work his way towards the rim. Big B Williams with his second personal. Let's get more from Jimmy Erdahl. Mark Turgeon wanted to get away from that one-on-one -on -one style basketball that Maryland was relying on. He, In terms of the aggression towards the paint, Jim, you mentioned he wanted to get back to that, but fill behind once someone hits the paint. Also, he wanted to get it within five as they hit the halftime. Right now down by 10. We approach three minutes to go, first half. A little bit of a matchup zone that trip. Morsell rims out. Well, eight for 30 for Maryland from the field. Smart picked up by Wiggins. High screen, Bigby Williams. Oh, he may have shuffled them. And couldn't get it to drop. Cowan pushing tempo. Ayala kick. There you go, little dribble, pass it, dribble. Fernando, no. Three of 15 from beyond the arc. Ten point lead for LSU. Days forced to give it up. Mays fires, connects, a three. Well, that was pretty well defended too. Cowan on the side over there with him, but Mays can really let it rip. LSU is the three seed in the East, the highest seed they've had since 1981. And they were playing for the legendary Dale Brown. Out of bounds, Fernando allows it to bounce out of bounds because he knew LSU touched it last. And LSU selectively switching on the defense out front. And here's just a little flare. Over to the left corner. Mays not reacting in terms of putting it on the floor that trip, but Cowan just slow to get to him. Nas Reed back in. Fifth all-time meeting between these two schools. The series tied at two and two. Shot clock is at seven. We're under two minutes to go first half. Cowan jab step. Drives and missed it. Point blank range. Well, it's got to be a half a dozen shots that have appeared as if they've wanted to go in for Maryland and just keep sliding right out. He gets that shot. Maybe you want to use the glass on that one to make it an easier shot. But, you know, it's easy for me to say that right here. When you have a big guy running at you, pretending he's possibly going to block your shot, it makes it more difficult for your decision on the fly. He's been a good scorer and yeah. a good facilitator for oh, Maryland. Boy. Inside, Reed. The throw down. And Waters is picking them apart, too, with his passing. He can do it off the dribble. Goes right, goes left. They got to bounce to them right now defensively. They know they're in control. Let's see if they can maintain the defensive effort. And the lead is back up to 15 for LSU. And they're switching out with even the big guys on the little guys on the perimeter. Allen tries to lob it to Fernando. It's like there's six guys from LSU out there playing defense right now. Ayala, three. Short. Rebound, Ayala. Protects it. 
and kicks. The Jay goes, and I got to tell you, Aaron Wiggins is not intimidated by the idea of playing in the NCAA tournament. That is a smooth stroke for the freshman. And I, uh, interestingly, too, a couple of their best shots in the last five minutes have been second chance opportunities yep. and kickouts. They're just not getting anything on the initial sets. Fernando, Smith, and Cowan are a combined three of 15 for Maryland. LSU gets into a set here. Smart cut off by Wiggins. Step back, Jay. Grazes the rim. Maryland can hold for one. Mark Turgeon instructs his team. Slow it down. 22 seconds to play in this first half. A 12-point differential. Yeah, it would be a, a, a positive if they went in here down 10. It's just a different approach, especially if you score the last points of the half. LSU is 21-2 and two when leading at the half. Cowan, kick. Wiggins, again! <laughs> Aaron Wiggins, forget the 10 that you mentioned, it's 9. <laughs> there you go. Look at Mark Turgeon leading his squad over there. Big time shot to give them a lift going into the locker room. That jumper is legit. Major range for the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina. That is 41% on the season strike you. They needed those back-to-back -back shots. Jamie Erdahl standing by with Tony Benford. Coach, the matchup was there, big on big, but how have your bigs been able to take over this game? Well, I thought we did a great job attacking the paint. I mean, as far as getting odds and on the move, hitting them in on the move, and then we've been on the offensive class. Our guys have done a great job. But Trey's been a tremendous on ball screens, you know. He's making a play when they help hard heads. We just get it in the in the, uh, in the pocket there, so we got to keep doing that. But we're getting stops. That's the whole key. we got to get stops and rebound the ball. We'll be fine. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. All right, Jamie, end of the first half here in Jacksonville with LSU in front, 38-29 to 29 on Maryland. We'll send it to AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Booking.com. Be a booker. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. And by Capital One. What's in your wallet? In Jacksonville, let's check out the Pizza Hut first half stats with LSU in front, 38 to 29. Tigers shoot it at 47%. Big story in that first half, Jimmy, the bench for LSU, 20 points from the reserves. Gave them a big time lift when they needed. Days goes outside, he's got the seven points and four rebounds, so he gives them one lift. And here in the middle of the floor, you see Williams found that middle of the lane for his jump hook. And Smart, who can go to the basket, can shoot it, pull it back, another seven points. So overall, very good depth for LSU. And by the way, they're a pretty good basketball team. They are. To that first half in the freshman, Aaron Wiggins knocks down a couple of key three-pointers for the Terps. Yeah, they were huge. And I think if you're Mark Turgeon with the Terps, I think the message is, hey, guys, we shot up to 30%. Yeah. We made it back to under nine for that, the deficit. I said, go out and play. Just have fun. Let's see what happens. And try to pay attention to your shots when you get them. All right, let's get more from Jamie. Well, unfortunately, I had to ask Mark Turgeon the same question I did on Thursday, which is, Coach, how do you get Anthony Cowan going? And he gave me the similar answer, which is he just has to get out of his own way. Shot selection as a whole for Maryland, he was happy with early on, but they got away from their identity as the half progressed. Defensively, he said, we have to allow what we did all season long, which let our defensive effort affect our offense and we will be just fine maryland seven and six when trailing at half yes and the largest deficit they came back from this season at the half eight against indiana and purdue currently down by nine Reed, no rebound big b williams and a new shot clock for lsu they have to work the defensive boards more importantly to get things started too where they're very good with an eight plus margin of difference jumper doesn't go for taylor the run out by cowan ayala had the angle closed off and now maryland will get into a set 
as we start this second half. And I'd like to see some passing, moving without the ball, catching and do something with it. Put it on the deck, make something happen. You're seeing a catch and then you look. Smith turns, air ball. Yeah, so they're not really making LSU work when they do that. You know, a little clap of encouragement by Mark Turgeon, but guys, catch the ball, do something, make them play you. I mean, I know LSU is good, they feast on steals, they want to go the other way with their steals, but you have, to, you have to be positively challenging. Smith is now one of six from the field. He had 19 points, 12 boards against Belmont in the first round. Waters fakes. Boy, he can get to a spot quickly. Tremont Waters with a deuce. And what we're seeing, too, with Waters is when he gets to that spot, He's doing it with confidence in terms of, hey, I know I've gotten to my spot. Now I'm going to make you pay for giving me that spot. The lead is 11 for LSU. Fernando, deep catch, double. Now Waters backs off. Need a double with a dribble. Oh, baby, blocks. Big B Williams and Reed form a wall for LSU. Yeah, the double team started, and Fernando never got the rhythm. Watch out. Go! Missed it, ricochets off the rim as Reed tried to put it down hard. <laughs> I would not want to be in the way of that, that guy coming at you. Morsell crosses. Smith doesn't take the J, contact, no call. And the jumper is no good. Rebound, Fernando. Oh, Fernando flush. Here comes Waters again, though. Off of the main basket, Tremont Waters going end to end. Yeah, to your point, Ian, you just cannot have that. You can't watch, you know, the Fernando dunk and say, wow, we're back. That's a great play. Get back in defense and make sure you take Waters off the floor in terms of pushing him to the sideline. 42-31, LSU. Trying to get it into him on the blocks. Watch the one bounce, there'll be a double. Even before this trip, there it is. Fernando fights through it. Cowan doesn't take the three. Kick. Morcel. In and out. Fernando got a hand on it. And he's called for the foul. Well, check this one out. He just misses the shot. Just maybe a foot or so out beyond his reach on that one. And here, Fernando just finishes this off with some power. But what do they do? They answer right back. And the little guy, Waters, comes down the floor and makes it happen off the bounce. Second foul on Bruno Fernando. LSU 42. Maryland 31. Winner advances to Washington, D.C. to play the survivor of Michigan State, Minnesota. Waters turns the corner. And it's off the hand of Taylor. Out of bounds. There will be a new king in the East. Bleacher Report's original animated series, Game of Zones, returns for season six on Thursday, April 11. Watch it on the BR app. And I'm sure you're the same. You're probably, probably starting to think if you need some scoring from the outside, Wiggins had the hot hand. Mm -hmm. Three of three in the uh, from the three-point range in that first half. He's back on the floor right now. Ayala tried to drive it on Waters. Cowan, oh boy, off the hands oh of Smith, break opportunity. Oh. <laughs> they somehow blew it. There were two Tigers rushing towards the ball with Mays and Taylor, and it's kicked out of bounds. And I, and I've never been in this spot before with a 42-inch vertical leap, but I think Taylor was trying to get that one to put on a show, and he just could not dig it up off the floor. Young man that can jump out of the gym. Yep. You got to catch it first. You do. Maybe an opportunity to answer, though, after a near mistake by Maryland. Trying to go high-low. Wiggins pull-up jump. In and out. It looked good coming off the fingertips. Confident, too. Waters drives, lobs, catch. And put down by Big B Williams. It's just that easy for LSU around the rim. It might be nearing a time. Yeah, there it is. They're nearing a timeout just to be forced to take a look at it. LSU showing them a variety of offensive opportunities. Here you see the little bit of a pick and roll. It's going to end this way right here. Upstairs, gather and finish. LSU has opened up a 13-point lead on Maryland. Let's take a look at the double-take replay presented by Orange Vanilla Coke. Two days ago, Emmett Williams going over the scores table into <laughs> Belmont play-by-play -play voice Kevin Ingram and our first ever triple spillage at the NCAA tournament. Now he was okay, the left elbow. Uh, the shirt did survive, although there was 
some obvious stickiness and Ingram and Williams actually took a picture posted on social media later that day. Do you think he had in his mind that if I squeeze the cup at the end, <laughs> I will really get on national TV? Yeah, the, the thing that had to happen there, this was a convergence of so it's many things. That had to be a full oh, cup absolutely. to produce that kind of result. If he had had two-thirds of his Diet Coke, you get maybe a little bit of spillage. And the other analytical work we'll do on that is that generally you lose the cup. You don't just hold on to it and keep squeezing it. That was another good part of it. You could have used that the other day, this guy with the broom, huh? The young. Apparently, there. there's been some <laughs> spillage, spillage over in that area. And they've brought over a secondary wiper. Sticky. They'll play. Final check from Earl Walton. Maryland starters are just 8 of 36 from the field. There's about four minutes gone by in this second half from Jacksonville. Can Callen get it going? Uh, move and pick. Offensive foul to Majic, the Spaniard. We have a timeout. Maryland is trying to hang in there, but LSU is imposing its will. Technical foul has been called on Mark Turgeon after the foul was called against Maryland, the illegal screen. Yeah, they're going to call zero right there for the slide as the shooter comes over the top. Rules analyst Gene Steratore watching from New York. Gene, what'd you see? It's a really good call by Earl Walton on the illegal screen. Look, officials will allow a coach a spontaneous reaction to a call that he may disagree with. But when Coach Turgeon waves him off once, I see Earl make contact, eye contact with him. Now you wave him off again. You're putting yourself in a bad situation there as a head coach, drawing a lot of negative attention on really what is a good call. And Earl Walton really is left with no other decision at that point than to assess him with a technical foul. Yeah, Gene, I agree with you 100% on the call. And I think from a coach's perspective, why it lingered very quickly with him. It's coming after a timeout. They run a set play. They want his guy to set a screen because if you noticed after that, the guy shooting the basketball was wide open and he buries it three. So I guess if I'm a coach, the emotions start to just build, 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 and then I, I lose it. Totally agree, Jimmy. And then, you know, when you have an offensive foul, you know you're taking a possession away from the team, as you said, after a set play. There's frustration, but we can't wave officials off like that yep. and not expect some repercussion. Yep. Uh, all right, Gene, 15-point lead for LSU after Mays makes good at the line. Waters lets it fly, and it's rebounded by Wiggins. And Cowan from time to time will get it up and down. And yeah. he sticks it from long range. It's a 12-point LSU cushion. Is it an opportunity for Cowan to get himself on track with just one shot like that? Maryland come back with the zone. Did they Peter get a steal. There you go. They do. Wiggins oh. blocked from behind. A foul on Big B Williams. Beautiful effort defensively just then to stay in the play if you're Big B Williams. And watch him come down, but get it up and go for it. And an opportunity for Maryland, though. It's the right call. Gets a touch of the ball, but takes the right hand and the, and the right wrist out of the play. That is number three on Cavell Bigby Williams. And that's why you see Days at the scorer's table getting ready to get in this game. 86% shooter, Aaron Wiggins. So Days returns. Smart will join him. And Wiggins just broke his fall enough as he collided with the stanchion. Gave them a nice lift in the first half. He had offers in the ACC and the SEC, but elected to go to the Big Ten in Maryland from the state of North Carolina. And coming into the NCAA tournament, he had not really played well in his previous three games, but now the 2-3 zone look. Really funneling over towards the shooters on the right side of the floor here with Mays over in the right corner. Wiggins has 11. He's the high man overall in this game. Ball movement. Smart gives it up. Shot clock is down to 10. Confused for a second here with this zone. Let's see if it pays more dividends. Smart, five to shoot. Drive, the push shot. No, Reed snatches. Can't finish it. 
And the rebound grabbed by Fernando. He fouled. Yeah, days on the reach in. Fernando said, I have to go get a rebound right now to stop LSU. And watch him position himself. A couple of shots go up. But watch number 23 say, This is my basketball right now, Fernando. He goes up with two hands. And these guys are starting to feel a little bit of the energy on the positive side build up for the Maryland in terms of their defensive effort that trip. Nine rebounds for Fernando. 46-36, LSU. See what he does in the post. Be patient. He's a good passer from the post diagonally. Kick. Cowan. Is he feeling it? Yes. It's a three. Nice spot up by Cowan. You make sure that people know that Fernando can pass diagonally from the post, and you find an easy spot for him to just see you. Back-to-back -back threes for Cowan. He's got nine overall. So stay with the zone. Smart the dribble try. Nice lifted. And a near turnover. No, no possession yet. Good call. No, no one's got it. Good no call by the official just then. Ayala off the rim. And Reed grabs the rebound. More charging up, giving signals. Now what does he do? Yep, let's stay with the same thing that's worked for a little bit. Eight nothing run. Cowan is limping though for Maryland. He just crouched down in pain. There was a scramble for the loose ball and Cowan got caught underneath. He also made a big three. It's a Terps charge in the second half in Jacksonville. The rules of aging are changing. New jobs at any age, crushing it at every stage. Numbers don't define us. 25, 45, 65 is a state of mind. Dreams to seize, more opportunities, disrupting aging. Behind all this changing is AARP, opening doors for you, for me. Too old, too young, nuh-uh. We're in this as one. So let's take on today and every day with AARP, real possibilities. No touching. 46-39, LSU in front. A little concern here for Anthony Cowan Jr. Right here? Yep. What happens? This is when the timeout was called, oh, and yeah. Cowan is limping noticeably and had to crouch down just to gather himself. A timely timeout by LSU for him. Jamie? He still looks to visibly be in pain, but he waved everyone off. Several trainers and coaches came to check on him, but it looks like that left ankle foot area. So it, why with the timeout? Let's see if they can find somebody in the middle of the floor against this 2-3. It's got to be a guy who can handle it. There's not a bad guy right there for Reed. He can make passes out of it. Well executed. And the jumper is smooth. Darius Days has a three. Now you go 2-3. And that middle of the floor is going to be open, but put somebody in there who just can't catch it. Put somebody in there who can make something happen when he, when he turns. Days averages five points per game. He's got 10 today to lead LSU. Wiggins Help off the out. spin and kick. Cowan, hop step, floater well short. Caught by Smith, and he lays it in. I'm just looking at Cowan. I think he's okay running to Jamie's point a second ago, but his mouth was working towards the official. 49-41 LSU. Middle of the floor again. Reed with a flip. Left-handed miss. Offensive board. Denial Smith. He got Mays on the inside and a run out. Two on one. Nice Ayala cut. cuts to the rim. Oh. Slam down. Fernando. And it's waved off. A foul on the delivery by Ayala yes. as he corkscrewed inside. Yeah, smart that time. Ian coming down the floor was the guy who put the hand out and fouled. But that's a good break and a good cut. First foul on Javante Smart. And this was earlier when Cowan went down. Yep. Days landed on him. Yep. Big body on that ankle. Ayala short, 78% free throw shooter. And we're going to get a change here. And Cowan is limping noticeably. So he'll just possibly see the trainer. They'll talk to him a little bit, ask him how he feels, and if need be, possibly retape him over there or reinforce the taping. Athletic trainer Matt Charvat. When you're trying to make a run to get back in a game, you need to make, and there you go, the second free throw. Marcel replacing Cowan. It's an 11 3 extended run for the Terps. And the LSU lead is down to seven. Let's see if they collapse the middle of the floor a little bit better on this zone. Fernando's a little bit closer to the middle. 
Jumper doesn't go for Waters. Contact, no call, Ayala controls it. The guards have to stay back. Ayala did this exact thing that he was supposed to do there. Long rebound, don't run out yet until you get the possession. And post up, double team probably coming. Fernando, they stay at home. Now the double. Fernando, wow. in and out oh, with a left hand. Man. My goodness. Halfway down for Fernando. Waters crosses off the pro. Smart. He'll take his time. 17 to shoot. High screen Williams. Smart drives in and missed it on the teardrop. Rebound controlled by Williams. Never hit the rim. Jump shot smart. No from three-point territory. Uh, Maryland's rebounding the basketball almost off the floor, which means they're really putting the bodies on the LSU guys who are very good at offensive glass opportunities. Ayala handling the point guard duties with Cowan on the bench. And he's been known to do that all season long. Morcel posts up and scores around the rim. Nice delivery, too, by Smith from the outside there. They did a reverse high-low. They went the big man out front at 6'10". Get it to your little or smaller guy posting up. LSU is 4 of 16 from the field in the second half. Their lead is down to 5. Waters penetrates, doesn't get the roll, but he is going to the free throw line. A young Maryland team. Daryl Morsell, the sophomore, stepping forward for the Terps. The world's best vibe for the coveted green jacket, a tradition unlike any other. The Masters, April 11th through the 14th on CBS. 11-14 to play, second half here in Jacksonville, LSU 49, Maryland 44. Let's get a report from Jimmy Erdahl. Anthony Cowan Jr. is checking back in. The trainers tried their best to look at that left foot, which is what he alluded to, which was hurting him, but he continued to wave them off. They didn't take the shoe off, no retape or anything. He stayed standing the entire time, checked back in. He has no pre-existing issues on that left foot side. Yeah, it just looked like it happened from that scramble. He had a big body land on him awkwardly as they were going for the loose ball. The players can play through the first part of that injury on because there's the, the, the energy level that you're playing with, the adrenaline will keep you going. Maybe tomorrow it hurts. I think there's another guy in the second game called P.J. Washington who did that a couple of games ago, right? Got hurt, played through it. So the similarities there, you can play through the first. And that's all they're concerned with now. But they obviously are going to ask him how he's feeling and make sure there's, they're not taking any risks. Waters hits on a pair of free throws. He's immediately replaced by Skylar Mays. And now Nas Reed back in. Takes Emmett Williams' spot on the floor. So it's Taylor, Mays, Days, Smart, and Reed. Five on the floor for LSU. Cowan, Wiggins, Morcell, Smith, and Fernando for Maryland. Jumper Wiggins grazes the rim. That's a good look, too, for a guy who's been confident in this game shooting the basketball. Taylor defensively is on him, wasn't a factor. Back to the zone. It's a little tighter, as you notice. It's more, more people closer to the paint. Now you got to react. Mays fakes on a three. Working around the horn. Mays will fire. The box out by Smith. Almost as if that was the first time they saw that 2 3 zone, which it is not that. Not executed very well. Morcel to the rim. Bank shot, no, but a foul. LSU has missed 10 of its last 11 shots from the field. And this is not a team that relies on the three pointer. Only 25% of their points come from downtown. This is how you hunt down a foul. You just throw your body into the action. Now, obviously, he's looking to convert that, but really the first message you want to send is I'm going in there to the officials. I'm going in aggressively. I want to get my call. If I make that bucket, that's the icing on the cake. And Daryl Morcell, 69% shooter, misses on the first. Waters back in, a short breather. Four guys on the inside right now, too, on a missed shot. All go after the ball very, very well. So LSU better be blocking out against Smith and Fernando. Bigby Williams replaces Darius Days. 
The team is 7 of 11 from the line. Tack on another 8 of 12 for Maryland. It's been a good nine and a half minutes, though, for Maryland in the second half. Let's see if LSU can figure this out. Reed turns in, lays it up and in, plus one. Good decision. You know, you wouldn't think you want to put a 6'10 guy in there because sometimes teams do design they put a 6'10 guy in there just to be happy to get the basketball in the middle. You want to get a guy who's going to be able to do something with it. And I'd say that is doing something with it right there. Power play to the basket. Third foul on Jalen Smith. The lead is back up to eight. Maryland will have to make that adjustment the next time down if they stay in the 2-3. They'll have to slide somebody to the middle to play almost a man-to-man -man against the middle man against LSU. LSU is now 11 of 12 at the free throw line. Watch behind you. Fernando drops step, missed it, and a foul is called. They get Reed over the top on that one. They did. That's number three on the Asbury Park, New Jersey native. If Fernando's going to go, he better go fast, because watch. There'll be three guys coming at him. One in the middle, one on the baseline. Part of their scouting report that they've practiced. Once he puts it down, you must double team him. He's too good if he gets it and goes. 77% free throw shooter, Bruno Fernando. Five points, nine rebounds, three fouls on Reed, three on Big B Williams for LSU. Smith sits, Ricky Lindo Jr. in. Smith has three fouls. That's decision time with LSU, I am two. Ten minutes left with Reed. It'll be interesting to see if they try to go to this 2-3, get him in the middle again, but I think they'll be careful. If this was a defensive set, they might have taken him out. Here and a go. steal for Cowan. Maryland running. Cowan lobs it up. Wow, good save by Cowan also. It was off a deflection. Morsell creating space for two. And the foul. They've been throwing the blitz a little bit at half court. That was just an, an errant pass going the other way. And Cowan goes after this to save it. That's a legal play. He gets it and barely they keep it in play. And look at the double clutch to get this one to go and it was Bigby Williams the second man through trying to block it picking up his fourth foul for LSU Bigby Williams had 10 points 10 rebounds and four blocks in the first round win over Yale Morcel has it rim out knocked around Lindo goes after it did he knock it off right. Mays is the question Nice. He did. John Gaffney comes across. He had a pretty good angle from a long distance to get the Maryland call. And let's see, two guys going after it. There's a little pull there. Ooh. Ooh. I think it's a, I would say that's an LSU ball. Yep. Yep. I don't think the top hand of Lindo caught that on the way down. Lindo got a piece of it, but it never hit Skyler Mays. Let's see if Maryland can take advantage of the break here. 9.45 to go, second half. They've outscored LSU 18 to eight over the last six minutes. That'd go at the bigs. Mid post, Fernando, yeah, offensive him. foul. Oh, you better bring that ball back. Yeah, yeah, he did. Emmett Williams took the hit. And the third foul on Fernando. The guys that we focused on at the beginning of the broadcast, watch that left shoulder right there. That's a, that's a good call from the officials. You'll get a good look at it right now. Who's initiating the contact? You don't even have to say it again. But he did turn with the basketball and run towards half, half court. The big guys are all picking up foul problems for us here. Turns into a perimeter game, possibly. So Maryland has to go a little deeper. Tomajic has seen just limited action. He's now in there for the Terps. He's got to be careful if he decides to drive the ball, Reese, in case somebody picks up a charge on him. Waters gives it up. Ooh, and a foul called. Lindo thought he got it clean. <laughs> it was pretty close, actually. Mark Turgeon thought the same thing from the other end. Here's Waters again in the paint. The reaction. Boy, it looked like hand on ball. And that's what Lindo thought also. That is the 17th foul against Maryland, which is going to put Emmett Williams at the free throw line. LSU has 16 fouls at the 9.23 mark. 
69% shooter. Uh, you may notice also it's a, the other night LSU did this a lot. It may change right now with Reed coming back, but they only had one guy there in the inside positioning. Now they have two. The other night in their first game, they didn't have anybody on the offensive side in the free throws. Just setting up their defense and just letting it go. One out of two for Williams, 55-49 LSU, seven points for the freshman. Tigers are now 12 of 14 at the line. Play with the energy that you've been playing with the last eight or nine minutes. Fernando back in. Kick for Cowan. Better work by Mays to track him on the right side of his body for the shot. Mays right. a big defender, 6'4", 200. Fernando, outside, jumper Smith. No, wow, rebound snatched. Smith saves. Cowan takes it in, contact, fakes it home. Beautiful drive by Cowan Ironman because nobody had the positioning and he sensed that as soon as he got the basketball He said to himself I can drive this to the left side because no one has cut off that seam for me great decision 11 for Anthony Cowan jr. This is a four-point game with 835 to play Waters Nice ball fake Leans in doesn't go for smart Oh, that's going to be LSU ball, I believe. Yeah, Smith was lying yeah. out of bounds, yep. and the ball hit him. Yep, good call. So LSU will retain it. Look at Reed coming over the top there. No foul Boom. for him, but right off his knee. Yep. And look at this. He knows there's an angle to the basket. Williams just a touch late getting there, but a very well recognized by Cowan on the drive. Watch Waters will trigger in for LSU. Yeah, watch for a slip cut to the middle of the floor after you get an exchange. Tigers shooting five of 19, 26% in the second half. What happened there? Nine seconds on the shot clock, and Brian Dorsey wow. works his way over. Shot clock didn't reset, but that ball yeah, I'm hit the rim. That hit the rim? I think that's what yeah, they're trying to determine. They were so focused on the ball going out of the bounds and the action and now let's take a look. Huh? Yeah, it yeah, hits there. Yeah, right there. He Reed actually pushed it up. So the ball bounced off the backboard, didn't hit the rim on the shot. But was it a shot? Now that's probably what the determination is because they've left the shot clock at nine. Yeah, just inadvertently hitting the rim. Nobody had possession at that point. Waters lobs it for Reed. Seven to shoot. Shot clock is down to four. Waters, that's a deep one. Wow. Rims out. Knocked to the outside, LSU. Mays. No good Look at a three. Oh. I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's a, a great call. That's a tie-up. I was just going to say, because one guy falls to the floor doesn't mean it's going to not be a tie-up. Taylor and Fernando both got their hands on it. And the possession arrow to Maryland. Now watch Fernando's in the middle. He grabs it. That's a good call, I think. Both of them got both of their hands on the basketball right there. Let's see. They There's no foul because they're coming straight down. One falls. That doesn't matter because Fernando's not initiating the contact to push him to the floor. LSU 55, Maryland 51. We approach eight minutes to play here in Jacksonville. A spot in the Sweet 16 at stake and a touch foul. Emmett Williams. I think that's a message foul there, I am. That's 17 fouls now on LSU, one and one for Maryland. Wednesday on CBS from LeBron James comes the fiercest competition to ever hit the streets. Million Dollar Mile. It premieres Wednesday after Survivor only CBS. When you think of it, two of the youngest teams in the NCAA, in the first half, Maryland was playing like a young team. LSU has shown signs right now of kind of their knees buckling just a little bit in terms of their lack of experience. Let's see if they can regroup, as did Maryland, from the first half to the second half. Seven points, ten rebounds for Bruno Fernando. Trying to cut it to two. 
Good stroke. 55-53 LSU. And they like the zone, and what do they do? They stay with it because LSU has not figured it out, but probably two times. The Tigers have never trailed today. Mays, deep three, off the rim, rebounded by Ayala. And Maryland is rebounding out of the zone very well also. Fernando not looking for a shot. Cowan, the D from Marlon Taylor. Just continue to play with energy. They're playing as if this isn't an NCAA game, Maryland, in the second half. Yourself dumped down. Fernando sets up Go against through. Williams. That mistake. Put, Put it, it down the... low, and it's Waters who goes down to get it. And the tie-up goes in LSU's favor with a possession arrow. Maryland and LSU. Who's going to the Sweet 16 in the East region? Cal is in the building. The Kentucky Wildcats getting ready to take on Wofford in the 2-7 matchup <laughs> in the Midwest. Great picture. <laughs> Our game summary, LSU up by two on Maryland. Second half, the Tigers trying to rediscover their offense. LSU is just one of 10 from three-point territory since halftime. And it's been all the 2-3 squeeze zone that Maryland has started to play. Reed will fill the middle of the floor if he can on occasion. I think you get a slightest little perimeter guy in there sometimes too. Go on the skip pass cross court. Taylor lines it up. Good box out there by Smith for Maryland. Yeah, you notice also Reed with the three fouls just there. That's smart play to stay away from that rebound in case he had to go over the top to get it. Terps are down by two. Watch the curl, somebody driving it towards the basket. Morsell, penetration, he coughs it up. LSU is running. Mays to Waters, doesn't take the three. Half court set, Reed, the spin, left hand is blocked by Smith. They got numbers here if they hurry. Cowan down the middle, finds Ayala. Inside, Smith turns with the left hand. We are tied at 55. Well, Smith had a big game the last time out with 19 points and 12 rebounds. Good run down the floor. That's because one of the LSU players, Reed, was down, fell down, and they took advantage of it. Not in the first spurt, but the second time. 8.6 rebounds for Smith. Mays swings it. Nine to shoot. Will hit six minutes to play, second half in a tie game. Yeah, just haven't adjusted well enough against this zone. Waters spin out. Mays off the mark. Maryland with a chance to take its first lead of the day. Loop ahead. Smith to catch in traffic. Hit beforehand, I think. Won't count. Yep. A foul called, and Smith will head to the free throw line. It's Skyler Mays, his second. And so Reed loses the ball on the way up. He gets the clear hand on it. And then Smith working with his left hand more under control because there was no deflection waist high like there was on Reed's. Jalen Smith. McDonald's All-American and a 66% free throw shooter. He was the number one recruit in the state of Maryland. The Terps lead for the first time. It's an 11-1 Maryland run. I am generally what you see defensively, as we've seen with Maryland's zone. Occasionally you'll see, okay, teams have broken it, they've figured it out. And then we have to go back and alternate from man to man back to zone again as he hits that second big free throw. He's got a good stroke. He really does. For that number, especially at 66 or so percent. But LSU has not figured out this zone as of yet. Waters penetrates. Reed steps through, gets the roll. But even there, they figured out that Waters has to go by it from the outside. Another variation of beating the zone. But they've been passing it around the horn instead of going to the middle or beating people off the bounce. Reed has 13. That leads LSU. We are knotted up at 57 apiece. 
Cowan one-on-one -on -one with Mays. Yeah, Cowan playing a little bit more confident than he did in the first game and this first half of this one. Four on the timer. Cowan gives it up. Ayala launches. It's good. A three. There's an example of Cowan, the Lion, whose head is in this game right now. He sh saw that shot clock disappearing on him, didn't force it, but gave it up to a wide open Ayala. Maryland rallied against Belmont in the first round. Wow, oh, that doesn't go for Smart. Maybe it's that rim down there. Yeah, those shots were going <laughs> down for LSU in the first half. They were not yeah, for working Maryland. for Maryland. Wow, totally different. 60 to 57, Terps. Smith out high. Takes the handoff. Nice bounce pass. Ayala stripped to the ball. Turnover. Smart pushing. Get into it early. May sets the feet. Got a three. How about Cowan trying to take a chance? It cost them just then. Late on the steal attempt, and he leaves a very good shooter wide open on the right side. A mistake by Maryland to allow LSU to knock this one up. 11 points for the junior. Ayala, the blow by, is met there by Bigby Williams. The follow, oh. it goes, Fernando. Well defended by Bigby Williams, went straight up, allowed to do that, no contact, but the follow-up on the offensive glass, impressive for Maryland. Forcing the action, bank shot is good. Javante Smart. Look down the floor, caught by Smith. Two defenders back, and he'll wait for his teammates. LSU has made an adjustment now on the fly to I and they're deciding to drive by the perimeter at the other end of the floor smart play by the LSU team 62 62 there you go give it to him Fernando ball fake On a kick Smith lines it up In and out. Oh. Rebounded by Big B Williams for LSU Nice little pace here isn't it for three minutes or so back and forth and we are coming up on the three-minute mark in Jacksonville. Second round action in the NCAA tournament. Smart. There you go, a little dribble driving. Leans in, trying to bank it home. And a rebound grab by Fernando. Up the floor in a hurry. Morcel to the rim, layup, no. Smith, foul called. Waters was there defensively. Two Terps end up on the hardwood. And Morcel needs some help. Cowan couldn't do it himself to help him. Uh, so put it up on the glass or try to get it to the glass and make things happen. Nice finish. And then here comes the attack. This is the adjustment that they've made. We're going to drive it to the middle of the floor and see if we can get some money out of it. LSU has seen its largest lead of 15 completely dissipate. Absolutely, and it's been that side of the court where they're now shooting, just cannot get the ball to go in. The 2-3 two, three and 3-2 three, looks on the zone that they've seen for Maryland has given them problems. Tied at 62 over to Jamie Erdahl. Tony Benford's message for LSU in that huddle, guys. Simple plays against the zone defense with a high tempo. We've been here before, and we can finish it off like we have done in the past. On the other side, Jamie, I don't know if you look at this as a cause and effect, but Mark Turgeon got called for that technical. Yep. Since that point, Maryland is plus 15, and they can add to that number here with Jalen Smith at the free throw line. I think if you're coming down the other end now with LSU, they've had some success driving by the zone. We'll see if Maryland makes a switch to confuse them a little bit. But watch, everybody talks about driving to the middle and kicking it to the side. Don't be surprised if there's a lob play going through the middle or a pull-up jumper in the middle of the lane. There was no foul there. The ball was rolling around after it went through the rim, and there was some contact. I think it's just two guys on the left side. They both go together. I don't think there was anything other than they fell down together. One point lead for Maryland. Under three minutes to play. Against the zone, Reed. Back in. Right up. Engulfed by Morcel and company. I thought Morcel had his left arm wrapped around the back in the jersey of Reed just then. Two and a half to play. They'll try to tie his shoe over here in front of us. Ayala bounces for Smith. One point lead for Maryland. 12 to shoot. Cowan's got a mismatch yeah, go with by, Reed. Go by him if you can. He'll take the three. Short. Rebound. 
Knocked over to Waters. LSU looking to regain the lead. Waters drives in. Reed denied. Jalen Smith do not go in there. Wow. And LSU returns the favor. Well, LSU down their offensive end. They were trying to get down the floor before they got Maryland set up with their defense. There's that quick block that triggers the break going the other way. Ayala yeah. had it negated by Mays. Boy, Mays really stayed away, too, and timed his block on that shot perfectly. Seven blocks for Maryland, four for LSU. It is a battle in Jacksonville. And with that, why don't you give us some insight from your days as a player? I'm a happily married man now, Ken, so I hardly think those stories would be appropriate. From your days as a basketball player, Phil. Oh, heavens, why? Those are boring. Just okay is not okay, whether it's announcers or wireless networks. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. Now with 5G Evolution, the first step to 5G. More for your thing. That's our thing. Looking back at the history books for Maryland, last NCAA tournament win after trailing at the half. Have to go back to March of 2001, a first round victory against George Mason. They were down by three, won the game by three. Remember, they went on a run to cut it to nine at the end of the first half, and then you could feel the carryover, yes. more confidence from Maryland, and LSU began questioning itself in the second half. Uh, Wiggins would be the guy you'd pick out to say who got them jump started to get this game turned around in the second half. Maryland with the ball up by one. We will hit two minutes to play. Winner goes to the Sweet 16 in D.C. Looking for the blocks for Fernando. There he is on a delayed cut from the right side. Fernando turns, kicks. Shot clock is down to 10. Cowan makes his move. Drive in, gives it up. Smith. Foul called on Reed. That's number four on Reed. And it sends Jalen Smith back to the free throw line. Reed has four. Big B Williams has four for LSU. But look at the decision Cowan makes. He brings it right to the defenders on the left side of the floor. And look at that left hand on left hand. 11 points for Jalen Smith. He is 5 of 8 at the free throw line. What a line, man. Maryland was in the Sweet 16 in 2016. They lost to Kansas 79 to 63. Before that, they hadn't been to the Sweet 16 since 2003. Terps up by two. And I, we focused on the beginning of this broadcast, the front lines of both of these teams. They haven't disappointed these young guys. They've really been going after it. Back to that zone again. 64-62, Maryland. Do you go by somebody or do you go into the middle of the lane with a the pass? There you go. Reed sizing up Smith. Reed, spin, wow, dish. Big B. Williams, no. Knocked around. Big B. Williams, the offensive rebound. He put it down low. Maryland scrapping for it. Mays is there. Mays again. Whoa. Rejected, but a foul. A lot of activity underneath. What a sequence. Well, that's one of the best sequences of this game. Because Big B. Williams, I don't think he realized, Ian, that he had time to go up. He caught the basketball right here. Watch him delay. You see that little delay? And then all of a sudden he's saying to himself, all right, I didn't go fast enough. And then it goes up for grabs. What an active energy level. The reaction from Maryland after the call. It sends Skyler Mays to the free throw line. Jalen Smith, his fourth foul. 113 to go. Mays is money at the line, too. 86% on the season. Yep. Three of three today. 12 points for Skyler Mays. Conley hits a pair. Both young teams, Ian. They're both playing like they're experienced teams. With full court action here. 
Oh, a little, little bit of a push. push. Yeah, a little bit of push by Cowan to get out of a double team there. LSU trying to pull a trick defense off him. Cowan off the ball. Ayala handles it for Maryland. He's good at the point, too. He fills in for Cowan a lot at the point. Under a minute to play. Fernando. Nice look. Ayala, a three. No. Rebound tip. Doesn't go. Morsell. And Reed claims it for LSU. 45 seconds left. If Waters on the floor, you're going to let him play it out. Waters kick. Deep one, Mays. Oh. Yes! Skyler Mays! A big one! 67-64. LSU. Timeout, Maryland. The last timeout used by the Terps, 32.5 on the clock. Nice decision by LSU when you have a guy that's tucked in here who can handle the basketball. So he draws a lot of double teams. Ayalik falls down over there. He looks the other way, and nobody fills on Mays as he fills the left side of the floor. He just looked at Marcel quickly and said, you know what, you're giving me too much space, and I'm going to try and take advantage of it, and he does. Yeah, strum it if you are LSU, <laughs> because in Baton Rouge right now, they are feeling it. That is the hometown of Skyler Mays, and decided to stay home to play for the Tigers. Three-point lead, 67-64. Maryland has the ball and has the possession arrow in their favor if there is a tie-up. No timeouts remaining for Mark Turgeon. Foul troubles, four for Smith, four for Reed and Bigby Williams for LSU. So start with the possession arrow, right, Ian? A lot of times you don't think it's important, but if you're Maryland on this set and there's a deflection, you have to go get the basketball. Sometimes you just want to bury it and keep the possession alive and take it out again. But right now they have plenty of time. I mean, this is perfectly set up not to panic if you're Maryland. You have 26 seconds on the shot clock, plenty of time in the game. A lot of teams look for quick hitters out of this in terms of because they're down three, they want to tie it. I would look for a blow to the basket in terms of going by somebody. They have good guys on the offensive boards, especially to fill up. And watch for a little dish down, too, if Cowan gets it and drives by somebody. Morcell gets it in. Three-point lead for LSU. There's his drive. Nice kick. Kick. Smith for the tie. Finishes it. Got a three. Well done by Cowan, too. Put it on the deck and made something happen. Now, if you're LSU, they'll call timeout, but you just sit on it right now, and you take the last shot with three seconds left. 67, 67. So the guy who's the point guard here making it happen, he's going to come across. He's looking for a little pull-up jump shot right here. Watch the big guys defensively, and this will be key, key right there. See how they react. Ball into the middle. Nobody reacts to the corner. It's too late. Smart turns his back, and you turn your back and don't slide quickly enough. You see, he's got to go a long way to get to the right side of his shooting body to get even a deflection or hand in his face. And it's buried by a 6'10 freshman, no less. He had not made a three today until that one. Smith was 0 of 4 from downtown, and now LSU has 19.5 on the clock with possession. We are all knotted up. Winner advances to Washington, D.C. to play the survivor of Michigan State and Minnesota. So here's that kick, and Smart has to go that long way to go get it. Boy, a brilliant shot from the corner and a nice set call by Mark Turgeon. So now I am one of the things that continues to go through my mind with situations like this all the time. Clearly, LSU does not have to be in a hurry. They can shoot this basketball. The worst thing that should happen to LSU is this game goes to overtime. But does Maryland just sit back and play it that way? Let's see if they come out, change their defense a little bit now. They may go back to a man-to-man -man defense to change this up 
and look for maybe a double team or just a jump. Because if you foul, I'm not sure you want to wait till the very end and let them run it. So here comes the jump. 15 wasn't, seconds left. Yeah, it wasn't much of one. Waters watched by Morsell. 10 seconds to play. Tied at 67. Waters makes his move. Three seconds. Waters to the rim. Layup. Good! 1.6. Maryland has no timeouts. Ayala, three-quarter court. It's over. March equals madness. 69-67. LSU is headed to the Sweet 16. Jubilation in Jacksonville. advance so here he comes waters around the corner and tell me if this isn't a difficult shot but you know what makes this a play i am the smart play of waters and the way he gets this shot off watch off the dribble and it's an underhand shot why because it's a quicker way to get the ball out of your hands if he turns that ball over and shoots it like a traditional shot there's a much better chance that that's going to get blocked but watch again guys coming in to help and also a little work there by big b williams to root out a blocker for maryland an exceptional play from the sophomore tremont waters and a gut-wrenching loss for the Terps. Just flat out, flat out heartbreaking for the Terps. Jamie Erdahl with Tony Benford of LSU. Coach, if you could take us into that huddle with 20 seconds to play. What did you draw up versus what unfolded just now? There's a play we call 54, and all it is is a flat ball screen for Trey, and it works against men on zone, okay? You know, and, and he just came off of it and made a play. Great players make great plays, okay? Uh, Coach Hard, Greg Hard did a great job. He called it up. So Coach run 54. I said, okay. And so Trey executed it. We wanted to make sure we take the last shot. But hey, that's a gritty Maryland team. That zone, you know, they had to go to that 3 2. We didn't next shoot well against it, but, you know, hey, we'll take the victory. You said that play worked against man or zone. Yeah. The zone challenged you in the second oh, yeah, half. Yeah. Very challenged. They did a great job. We were never going to run it. And we had executed some plays uh, before uh, in our pregame for it. But hey, they did a good job. You got to make shots. We didn't make shots. And, you know, we didn't attack it properly, but hey, we got stops when any two. And this little guy here is the best point guard in the country. Great, great plays. Congratulations, coach. I'll talk to Tremont now. What a play towards the end there. Tell, walk us through the situation that just unfolded and the confidence that was needed after you guys were pushed and challenged and Maryland came back in the second half. Yeah, we've been fighting all season. Um, as a whole, as a family, we just got to, we know that we got to buckle down in, in those type of moments. We have to protect the ball, make free throws, and just and just keep playing down to the wire. Uh, coach, uh, actually, all the coaches were saying that we were just going to hold the ball out, run the clock down, and just attack off the ball screen. That's what I did. When you guys are celebrating on the floor, you stand up, you put the number 44 in the air. How much is Wade Sims with this team in these moments? Um, he's always with us. Obviously, we, uh, we lost a brother, but we understand that he's always with us. The score, our score was 44 at one point, and we all stopped in the huddle, looked up at the uh, scoreboard, and just said 44 in the huddle. And we just knew we needed to get this one for him. And you got it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamie. Wade Sims was shot and killed their teammate and brother in September. This season has been dedicated to him. He wore the number 44, and it's a number that resonates within the LSU family. LSU, amidst a cloud of controversy, their head coach, Will Wade, not with the team, suspended indefinitely, but it's Tony Benford leading the Tigers into the Sweet 16. Waters wheeling to the rim, finding the slightest of openings to get the game winner. His mom and the rest of Tigers Faithful celebrating at Baton Rouge. Coming up, Wofford in Kentucky will send you to our New York studio for Capital One Tournament Central. After these messages, for Jim Spinarkle, Jamie Erdahl, producer Craig Silver, director Suzanne Smith, the rest of our crew, Ian Eagle, so long from Jacksonville, much more still to come.